guys, we're back. Um, so I'm going to jump into Meat Manager. So just again, quick reminder for those of you that are just joining us to cover Meat Manager. Um, just remember, I mean, we're, I've said this prior to the team manager portion. If you need any help with this stuff, especially given this year and all the different things that we're dealing with, I want to help y'all out any way that I can. So if you need anything um, support wise, reach out to me, email, phone call, whatever. I mean, I, I literally will answer the phone just about any time of the day and or night. Um, I work out of the house. So I, again, I, I understand that this is, you know, you may be calling me at 10 o'clock at night. I'll answer the phone. I'm really good about that. Um, you know, and sleep a little bit later with this coronavirus stuff. <laughs> Normally, I'm also up early in the morning this time of year. But if you need to get in touch with me, uh, just a quick reminder, phone number is 404-664-3975. And if you want to email me, I'm at fmarsden, that's M-A-R-S-D-E-N, at atlantaswimming.com. So, if, again, if you need help with anything, I, I know there are help features in these software packages but I can probably give you much more focused help um, than they can. Plus, they only work, they literally work bankers hours, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. So, again, you know, please don't hesitate to call me or email me. There's nothing that drives me crazy. I mean, I've had people call me on the phone, and they are just literally at the brink of tears because they've been trying to do something for three or four hours and couldn't figure it out. And they get, get on the phone with me, and it's like five minutes later, it's like, well, this was easy. Why well, stress out about it when I mean, the helpline is right here? I'm, I'm the easy button, so to speak. So please don't don't make your job any harder than it needs to be. I want to help you guys out um, any way that I can because I know that you guys have a lot on your plate and y'all do a tremendous job. So anything I can do to make y'all more successful, I, I want to be that resource and help. So jumping in, excuse me, jumping into Meet Manager. Um, so. Teams use the team manager to set up their roster, do their entries, you know, get their swimmers in. So meet manager is the software package that we use to actually operate the swim meet. So we're going to take the entry file that we created in team manager and pull it into meet manager. And once we've done that, we're going to be able to print things like heat sheets, the lane timer worksheets, um, you know, all the paperwork you would need to operate the meet entry lists for the parents to be able to see what their kids are swimming, what heat and lane they're in. All that good stuff gets generated out of Meet Manager, and that's the place where we're going to actually put in the times for the swimmers. That allows us to generate results, print out those reports, and then also once the swims are done, you can do ribbon labels for the swimmers. And then ultimately, a little bit different this year than last year, the lineup exchange and the results exchange for these virtual meets is going to happen out of meet manager so that's going to be definitely different than years past because normally you know that stuff's done on site um, at the meet you know you input the stuff and the two teams are both there at the same place with virtual meets that's not going to be the case and the other big difference was in the past when you were doing your regular meets you would have exchanged a lineup file with the other team a couple of you know a day before the meet exchange that information and the home team would have put all that stuff together. That's different this year. Drastically different. We'll, we'll cover that in great detail a little bit later in the class. So again, if you got questions as we go through, please don't hesitate to use the chat feature and Evan will relay those to me and we'll try and keep everybody on the same page. So as I mentioned, Meet Manager is the software going to use to create meat programs, score the meat, generate ribbon labels, and complete results for the meat. So big difference between meet manager and team manager other than what I've already highlighted is for team manager you just had one database to cover everything for that team so it covers all the meets all the results all the swimmers all the rosters it covers years of information in one condensed database meet manager is one meet one meet one database Okay, so every new meet is going to require a new database. So I'm going to walk you through opening up the database, setting up the meet, 
and we've set up a template meet with all the settings in there that you need to operate your meets and you've only got to make a couple of small changes just based on you know the number of lanes in your pool and things like that to adjust for that so it's really important for you guys to use this template meet because it factors in all of the things that need to be done to operate that meet correctly it's going to score it accurately it's not going to you know use some weird funky scoring system where you know teams score 40 points on a relay okay it's going to factor in all the things that you need to make sure that you cover and do so effectively for every team if you try and set these things up on your own again one small mistake can make a huge difference in how that meat gets handled it can make things very difficult so use the template meat i can't tell you how important that is so in the team manager portion, I talked about backup and restore. So this is gonna become even more important in Meet Manager because we're gonna be moving files around a lot more in this software than we would have in Team Manager. So let's go, up, go ahead, open up Meet Manager. And we're gonna start off by just opening a database. We're gonna walk through that initial step of just getting a database open and kind of go through a grand tour of what's in there. So if I go to File and select Open New, and it's going to come up with a screen that looks like this and say, okay, what do we want to name the database? Where do we want to save it? So again, you can save these files anywhere you want on your computer. It's your choice. The default location for most computers is going to be the Swim Meets 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever version of Meet Manager you have. They're currently up to Meet Manager 8. You can operate your stuff on a version of the software as old as Meet Manager 5, but we suggest you know staying relatively current with the software. Um, although I'm honestly this year I wouldn't worry about moving up to Meet Manager 8. It's not really going to be something you need this year. So let's start with Meet 1, and we're going to click Open. And if you're on the network version, it's going to come up with a screen that looks like this. Just click OK. Otherwise, it would have jumped you through to this meet setup screen. So the meet name. Well, what are we going to name the meet? So don't just name it as the opponent. Put it as the year 2020 and the two teams that are swimming. Brookwood Hills. Hills. Versus Hannibal West. Facility name, what pool is that? Don't have to worry about an address. You do have to put a city in there. State is Georgia. Postal code. Start date. So when's the meet going to begin? So we talked about this earlier. So the, the meets are going to be run throughout the week. Most teams are going to break these things up into different sessions each day to get their swims in. So whatever the, you know, the first date of that meet is going to be, and the end date, whenever that's going to be. Age update. Well, that's kind of important. So it's 05-31-20. That template meet that I talked about is going to have that set up in it. So just in case, if that's not correct in here, if you ever see this screen, make sure it's accurate so it calculates the swimmers' ages the right way. Entry open date, you can leave whatever default comes up in there. It's fine. Entry deadline, make it the first day of the meet. IB format, USAS, the first one, USA Swimming. Post LSC, just put in G for Georgia. Base country is USA. We're not worried about the altitude or default touch pads at both ends. Class, H group. Okay. Timers connected to the computer, don't worry about that. Just leave it as one. Meet type, just put standard. There are no divisions. Meet style. Technically, it is a two-team duel, but just leave it as standard. It just operates a little bit cleaner that way. 
technically it is a two, two team deal, but like I said, leave it as standard. Of course, well that's kind of important, is it yards or meters? Okay, whatever your pool is. So, quick note on that. There are a very limited number of metric teams that are in the league this year. So with that in mind, I'm not, those teams are gonna get a little bit of uh, help from yours truly. So if you're a metric pool and you swim against a yards team or vice versa, you're gonna send the files, result files directly to me and I'm gonna combine to me. It's a little bit more complicated math than most of you guys would be accustomed to. So in order to manage that, I'm actually gonna handle those you know, metric versus yards meets and get the meet scored for you. But there's, again, a selected number of those. Otherwise, you guys should be able to handle the process of merging these results. Again, hopefully after walking you through these steps today, you'll be old pros after, after one week of this. Question? Yeah, folks online, this will be in your uh, your guide, but if you want to take a quick screenshot of this just so you see the, the correct setup, uh, might be a good time to take a quick screenshot and keep it for yourself. Uh, can we go back uh, and so show how to select the database that we pick again? Yes. Just give me one sec. Let me, let's get through the screen first. DQ codes, you can put in whatever you want. I usually put in USA 2013. Time adjustment method, put FEMA rules, just in case it's not gonna come into play for y'all because you're not using timing equipment. Click OK, and that's gonna take you to the Meet Mobile screen. If you wanna use Meet Mobile, you can do that, okay? So we'll walk through setting that up. Settings, full meet data, you can check on that. Uh, you can give away the heat sheets your choice and let, if you're selling them at the meet, then probably don't give them away on, on Meet Mobile. But Meet Mobile is the app that you, you know, parents have on their phone to be able to follow the meet as the meet's going, as this stuff's being put in high tech. Now, granted, it's not gonna be live in a lot of cases. Most teams are gonna operate Meet Manager for their meets to input this stuff. Maybe not in the pool, they may wait till that day's done and they're just gonna input the times as they go. So again, we'll talk through that in a few minutes. If you don't want to include the free heat sheets, uncheck the box, or you can restrict heat sheet data. Terms of use, if you contract to agree, it requires you to do that. It's a bunch of legal gibberish. And you gotta prove that you are not a minor. Click agree. And then we'll go up here to this tab that says publish. Click on that. Team scoring options. Well, in your case, this isn't going to really necessarily apply this year, but just in case you put male, female, and combined. You can choose to display the event timeline if you want, your choice. Click publish general meet info. Before publishing, it's going to say, oh, this up. You got to confirm that you've signed the contract. Go back to publish. Say publish general meet info. And you may have to, in this case we're going to have setup sessions, but normally this will be set up. And it, again, when you load the template meet, it's going to have this stuff set up. So we'll close this out, but that's kind of how to get meet mobile set up. So going back again, most of you guys on your computers will have existing databases set up that are that are already in the computer. So again, I don't think I don't know if anybody's working from scratch this year, but if you were, that would be the first step that you would have to take is to open a database. So if you notice up here now that I've set this thing up, the very top of the screen, I can't see it on, on this, but right above where it says file, setup, teams, all that good stuff, there's a little ribbon and you'll see the actual database name right here. It'll say meet1.mdb. If you click on file, and if you scroll down here, right below where it says exit, that's the last X number of databases that were open. So you can jump around from database to database, or if you, again, want to look at all of them, if you click on open new, it's going to prompt you through to a particular folder. You know, you can hunt around on your computer where you keep your databases, but that will allow you to select another meet if you wanted to. 
Okay. Any questions so far? So cancel that, go back to the main screen. So we've got this database that we've just opened. If you click on events, you'll notice there's nothing in there. There's no, no events are set up. If you click on athletes, nobody there. There's no swimmers. This is just a shell. It's a base database with no information in it. Okay. Go back out to the main menu. Now, we're going to load one of these template meets. So this will be the building block upon which you can actually set up the rest of your meets once we've got this template loaded. So everybody go to File and select Restore. And it's going to come up with a restore method. So you want to take the first selection, replace the currently open database in C column swim meets, meet1.mdb, click OK, and let's go find one of these template files. So hopefully you can either A, you got the ones that I emailed you, or if you downloaded them from the league website, pick which one applies to you. So like I mentioned in the team manager session, there are no ASA DeKalb teams this virtual season. The old DeKalb Swim League teams, we don't have any of those teams are going to, you know, they're not participating. So. This is either for you going to be the ASA template for meters or for yards. So pick whichever one applies to your pool. Is it a metric pool or the yards pool? So I'm going to select yards because the majority of the pools are yards. Double click on that file and it's going to say, okay, this is the database we're going to load. It was created by this person at this time. Notice, click OK to replace. Current data will be lost. You're going to overwrite everything that's in this database. So be careful when you use this function. Because like I said, it's going to take the file that you're loading and load it over all the data that's in that database. Sometimes you don't want to do that. You don't want to load over an existing meet. So click OK. Are you sure you want to do this? It's giving you some speed bumps. Make sure you don't make a mistake. Yes, we do. Okay, restore completed. So we've now loaded one of these template meets. So click OK. Let's go back to events. Guess what? We got 86 events. Okay. So this database has everything in it that you need for the for the year. Okay, or for that meet in particular. You're gonna again have to set up multiple meets. But this is you've now loaded this template meet. If for some reason you lose these template files, you lose all this other stuff. If you ever have to go find these files, these sample files or template files, I'm going to jump on to the internet real quick. If you go to atlantaswimming.com and you use the Swim Leagues tab and select Atlanta Swim Association, it'll come up with this screen right here, ASA Meet high tech template and meet events downloads. So that's where you can find all the information that you need. So you can find the yards template meet for meet manager, meters template meet, so all that stuff's there for you to download. We'll also put a recording of this class on that, the link, once we've got that up, we'll put the link to that on here as well. One other thing that you can see on Swim Leagues, Atlanta Swim Association, if you look, there's a note for high tech online training. There's a great online resource here that's breaking this stuff up into digestible bits that you can quickly go in and find stuff in Team Manager like Team Manager Overview, opening a database. It's got little YouTube videos that can walk you through all the functional areas of this. It's a great online resource that you guys can use. So I encourage you to, if, if you stumble on something, maybe try this first and then, like I said, if you can't figure it out, phone call or email away. Okay, but it walks you through all these steps in a nice and neat way. Jumping back to Meet Manager. So like I said, we've loaded this template Meet. Okay, so what's in there? What else is in there? So let's go through step by step. If I go to Setup, and let's go to Meet Setup. So it's got a generic name for the Meet. ASA Dual Meet Template Yard. So you'll want to change that, you know, as, as needed. 
on a regular basis. We'll walk through that in just a sec. But this is just what's in here. You'll notice the home pool, we've got a default date of July 1st. But the age update is in here correctly. It's May 31st of this year. That's correct and accurate. Okay. Notice it's already set up for a standard meat style and a course of yards. Okay. All useful info. If I click OK, let's go back in under Setup and let's skip down to Entry Scoring Preferences, fifth item down. The first tab right here that's in red, Scoring Awards, this kind of says, okay, how are we going to award points? What are the ground rules for how this is going to operate? Okay. In the past, we normally would have checked the box. Score fastest heat only regardless of overall play step. Pull this one down. That was like you had to check it. This year, it is not checked. Big difference from previous years. The reason for that is because we're in virtual meets, every heat's going to be eligible to score points. So there's a big difference there. So make sure this box is not checked because if it is, it's only going to score a kid out of heat one. So I'm going to award points there which will create a massive problem when you combine these results because the way it's going to work out, that first heat's only going to, again, the way high tech's going to handle this, it's not going to be good. Let's just put it that way. Uh, the only box you really need checked is you can allow foreign athletes to score. It's kind of a weird quirk, but just in case, if you had a foreign designation on a swimmer, you could allow yourself to manage that. The big one here, though, is maximum scores per team per event. It should be two for individual, one for relays. These are kind of like the internal mercy rules of the league. It allows teams to only score two kids in an individual event and one kid in a relay event, or one relay in a relay event. Okay, if you don't have that in there, it allows teams to sweep the points and cre can create a little bit of a lopsided team. Right click OK. Move back to the main menu. If I go back out to setup again, and let's go to scoring setup. And let's click on standard. And you'll notice the points for individual events, five, three, and one. Relay seven and three. The big thing on this is, if, you know, say you go into your meet and you're starting to score things, and the score up in the first event is 84 to 26. Well, that means your scoring setup's out of kilter. And it means you didn't use the template meet to set things up. So if you had to fix it, this would be where you would go. So it's again, setup, scoring setup, and this would be where you would go in and manually change that. So if you needed to change it, click on the box, put in whatever the number was that you wanted, and you could correct it. But since this is correct, we're going to leave it alone. Click OK. So that's most of the basic stuff that's in that database, in that template. So we've got one loaded. So let's go back into Meet Manager. And you can set up the rest of your meets. Now that you've got the template loaded, you can build your other four meets by using a feature called Save As. So if you go to File and select Save As, it allows you to just rename that database and save it as something brand new in its existing state. So we've loaded the template meet, we've got the basic information in there that we need. We're gonna click on Save As, we'll just name it Meet 2. And click Open. Same thing, if it's networked, it'll show, pull up this screen, click OK. And notice up top, this top ribbon, you can't see it, I can't see it on my screen. But right above where it says seating, you'll see it's now meet two. Okay. The only thing you would have to do is, if you go under setup, you would change the meet setup. And just the basic information about the meet. 2020 Hanover West versus Winter Hall. Facility name, you know, Hanover West. Change the dates. But nothing else should really have to change. The course is still going to be whatever it is for your pool. Click OK. The, again, meet mobile publishing. I'll walk through that again now that the sessions are in there.
swords, male, female, and combined. And that sign at the street address is blank. Just say yes. Confirm it. Yes. And now the meat's actually on the boat, and it's ready to, to go. So if you got an internet connection on that computer, which if you're doing this stuff at home, you're probably going to have an internet connection, um, you can put this stuff up on the boat. Close this, go back out to the main menu. The big, the one other big thing teams will need to change though, everybody get an option set up and go down to options, very bottom. Change number of lanes for all final rounds. So that's the fourth one down. How many lanes is your pool? It's four, five, six, eight, or ten. So default in here is six. So if your pool six lanes, you can just leave this as is. But if you need to change it, this is where you would change it. So somewhere in a five lane pool, click OK. Do it for all events. Are you sure you want to make this change? Yes. Procedure complete. And we'll close this. So you can go through, file, save as, set up, meet three. And then again, go under setup, meet setup, and then all you've got to do is just make the adjustment to the details of the meet. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. So you can set up all five meets today and get it done quickly and easy. All right? Any questions so far? Keep going. Awesome. So, as I mentioned, file and restore, you know, replace backup and restore are the functions to again move databases around load it from one computer to the next save as helps you out make sure that you get all that stuff covered and get your meat set up okay we've just talked about meat setup let's go back into meat manager let's go back under setup athlete relay preferences if you wanted to change any details about the athletes and how the stuff appears in the computer this is where you would do it but again, most of the defaults are going to work fine. Just again, it's detailed info that will help you out. Click OK again. We'll go back up under Setup. Seating Preferences. So let's click on that. So, do you ever seed a swim meet? No. And here's why. There is a seating feature in here that would assign the swimmers lanes based on their times. And given the fact that we're in virtual meets and the fact that every heat's available to score, it might have been something some teams would consider using this year. Here's why you still should not use the seating feature in the software. The main reason is it assigns the times based, or it assigns lanes based on the swimmer's times. So if you don't have a time for a swimmer, they're not going to get seated in they'll always be in the last heat. So if you have a new swimmer to the team, so a kid moves in from out of town, they're brand new to the team, and they're a really good swimmer. And you know it. You go through the first week of practice, it's like, oh my gosh, we're, we're, we're in great shape with this kid. Well, guess what? When you go to see their entries for their first meet, you know how many times on them? It's going to dump them into the last heat every time. Parents will not like that. Okay. The other situation where this can happen is, a kid ages up, 9 and 10 to 11 and 12. You don't have any 50-yard times on those swimmers. The other big problem is the kid hasn't swum an event. So say that really good swimmer never swims freestyle, but you're going to put them in freestyle now because the rules set it up this year to where, you know, if they're going to swim a third event, it's got to be the short free, and you don't have short free time on that kid, it won't seat them accurately. You take care of the seating function in team manager when you manually assign the heats and lanes and input that data to team manager when you set that up to start with, okay? I'd love to say, you know, you can use the seating feature and just let it sort all this stuff out. It's just got more problems than it's worth to mess with. So leave the seating function of this out of your mind. Don't use it, okay? We'll cancel this, close that. If I go back in under setup, let's go to report preferences. So. Just like Team Manager, High Tech is going to generate all sorts of different reports, heat sheets, lane timer sheets, things like that. This gives you the op option to customize how that information appears. 
So for example, on the athletes, you want the last name, last name to appear first or the first name to appear first? Just personal preference. Most teams go last name first. Just seems to work out a little bit better. To meet programs and results, you can suppress the small extra scoring limits and things like that, so you don't get the questions about why is there X next to my swimmer's name? Okay. Teams, miscellaneous again, I won't bore you with all the details of this. You guys can look through this on your own. Look on the report headers though, second tab. If you wanted to put a custom header on any of your reports, like, you know, say you've got a team sponsor, say the Applebee's down the road is you know giving you a thousand bucks to put their logo all over everything else you could say brought to you by applebee's you know go bullfrogs whatever you want to put on there punctuation you want it all uppercase lowercase you know you wanted how it was input your choice the footer you can actually put logos at the base of all of your reports so again the sponsors that came in you could include their logos and all the reports that you do for the team so again, just a great way to put that stuff in there. Printer options, okay? This one's big. So if you're trying to run a report, you're trying to print it out, and you're like, my gosh, I keep hitting print, and it doesn't do anything. You gotta go in and tell it what printer you want it to print to. Okay, and specify the details. You know, you can tell it, hey, every time I click print, I want X number of copies. You could automatically set that up. And you could tell it, hey, I don't wanna see it on the screen first, just take it straight to the printer, your choice. Okay, all these preferences can be found here. Click OK, so we're back at the main menu. I go back under Setup. We covered the entry scoring preferences. I might click on that one again though. The second tab over, Entries and Entry Limits. Notice those are in there, four, two, and two. Actually, oh, I've got a boo-boo in there. It should be four, three, and two. Five, three, and two, my mistake. Okay, that's what's allowed. And you can tell it, hey, warn me if I put a kid in too many events. Ding at me. Give me an error message. Okay, or you can say, I don't want to worry about that. Just, you know, don't bother me. Uncheck the box if you don't want to have that in there. Back under setup. Covered scoring setup, all these other ones, the officials. The big one here is go down to directory preferences. If you want to tell Meet Manager, hey, every time I create a backup, instead of sending it to the Swim Meets folder, send it to the, you know, Meet Backups folder that I've created for myself. You could tell it to do that automatically, and it'll automatically do that. Otherwise, you got to go through the step of selecting the folder, the subfolder, all that good stuff. So you can do that with all sorts of different reports and files. It's your choice, but you can set that up here. Close that. Again, under setup, all the way at the bottom, options. Just a quick reminder, if you had to change the number of lanes on the pool, fourth item down, change number of lanes for all final rounds, not for prelims, but for final rounds. The default is six, but if you know you want to make it five or four or ten or eight or whatever, you can do that. Click OK. Select all events. And it's good. Say yes. Done. And we'll close this. So that's the stuff that's in the template. Okay? And that's the troubleshooting area. If you gotta go in and tweak anything and make sure that you know something's out of kilter. That's the place to look to find out, you know, hey, it's only scoring heat one. Why is it doing that? Well, you go in under the setup, entry scoring preferences, and make sure that the appropriate box is checked or not checked. Okay. So we've covered the athlete relay preferences, report preferences, we've covered scoring. So let's go to events. So in Meet Manager, click on events. So we've got our 86 events in here. So for some meets, teams may choose to run a different order of events or a different, you know, not necessarily an order, but a different, you know, 
set of events. They may say, you know what, we're going to do a backstroke relay. We're going to, you know, we're going to do, you know, take your pick. I mean, it's teams, we're going to give you a lot of latitude this year. If you want to do something a little bit off book, as long as the other team's on board with it, you can, you know, play around with this. So if you go into the events menu, if you double click on any event, you can edit it and change it any way that you want. If you have trouble, you know, monkeying around with this, like I said, just give me a call. I'll walk you through how to adjust this as needed. But if you, have, if you want to play around with this, this is where you would do it. So events, double click on the event, make the appropriate change, click OK, and it's adjusted. Okay. In this events menu, again, teams are going to break this stuff up differently each week. So some teams are going to do, you know, say for example, they're going to do the eight and unders on Monday. They're going to do the nine and tens on Tuesday. They're going to do the 15 to 18 on Wednesday. They're going to do the 11 to 14 year olds on Thursday. You know, take, take your pick however they want to do it. You don't really have to worry about changing the order of events that are in here because the way it's, and I'll show you when we start creating some these reports, there's a way to just print out a nine and 10 year old heat sheet, or an 11 and 12 year old heat sheet, you know, or an 11, 12 year old timer sheet just for that one session. You have the opportunity to kind of pick the events that you want to do um, in the sequence you want to do them. So you've got some options there to, to play around with that. If, for example, though, if you really kind of went way off base with how you're going to order these events, out of this events menu, if you click on sessions, this list, note it's got the start time is 5.30. Don't worry about the start time. I mean, if you want to change it, if you double click on this, you could change the actual time, but it's going to be different for every meet and every session. So, like I said, you can do this any way that you want. Um, but if you want to change the order of stuff, you could go in here and drag stuff around. So say event nine is going to split them after event 16. Well, if you click on event nine and drag it down below event, or after event 17, there it is. You can move this stuff around any way that you want. I don't think you necessarily have to do this for most of your stuff because, like I said, the reporting, I think teams are going to swim things in the same order. You're going to swim the freestyle, the long three, the backstroke, you know, the IM, the breaststroke, and the butterfly, kind of that normal sequence. And again, most teams are going to Try to stick to you know running certain kids at certain times, um, but like I said, if you want to play around with this, this is where you can move some of that stuff around if you needed to. We'll close this and close that. Get back to the main menu. So those are your events. Okay, we're not worried about the heat order. Fast to slow, slow to fast, that's your choice. The default is fast to slow. Um, I think most teams would prefer to have their fastest heat go first. They're just, that's what they're accustomed to. But again, if you needed to monkey around with that, you could. Um, but again, that's the default. So, from there, teams are gonna start looking at, now that they've got the database set up, you're gonna look at importing your results, or I'm sorry, importing the entries. So. This again, you're only going to import your team's entries that were created out of Team Manager. You're not going to get the other team's Team Manager file. Okay, That file this year is going to come out of Meet Manager, and I'll talk about those steps a little bit later in the meeting. Okay, But to import your team's entries, so once you've set them up in Team Manager and created that you know, ctcc-ga-entries file, if I go to File and select Import, and entries. And just for the sake of example, if you want to go through the steps, I created one of the sample files, the ctcc-ga-entries. Double click on that and it's going to unzip it just like it did in Team Manager and say I've sent it to this location. Click OK. And it's going to take you to where it's saved it. Just double click on the H file. And it's going to say, okay, this is what I've created. It's a meet entries file. It was created by this person on this date. And the file name is this. The meet name is this. Click OK. And 
we want to match on event numbers, no, don't worry about that. Uncheck that box. Include entries with no time. Yes, you do want to include those. Don't worry about time trials. The only box that needs to be checked is make sure you include entries with no time. Okay. Click OK. And it's going to say, OK, I've imported one team, X number of entries, X number of relays. So again, that should match what you set up in Team Manager. Okay. If it's out of kilter, doesn't look right, well, go double check, make sure you import the right file. Click OK. And if you notice, click on Teams. There's a team in there. The big place to go is go to Run. And you should see swimmers in these heats and lanes. Okay? So notice, we got swimmers in lanes one, three, and three. And again, this is going to look different for you. You're going to be in you know, all six lanes or all five lanes or whatever based on that. If you don't see swimmers in there, when you've done this, there's you know, likely a disconnect, and it's probably that you did not input the heat and lane data in Team Manager. That's why you're not getting that information. So again, make sure you go through those steps in Team Manager first to make sure it's done correctly, and then double check it. When you go to run, you should see some swimmers in there. Close that. The other thing you need to import is your full team roster. So that's everybody on the swim team, whether they're in the meet or not. If I go to File and select Import and go to Rosters Only. So again, let's go find another sample file, ctcc-ga-roster out of the sample files that were provided. Double click on it, it's unzipped. Click OK and double click on the file that it prompted you to. And again, same thing, it's going to say, okay, it's a roster file that was created by this person on this at this time on this day. Click OK. You want to copy the competitor numbers? Yeah, that's fine. There's no problem with that. UCLSC is part of the team match. That's fine. Click OK, and there are 121 swimmers. Click OK. And now all the swimmers that are on your team are now in that database. So say you've transferred this info over out of Team Manager and you're on the third day of your virtual meet and you find out that a particular swimmer is now available to be at the meet, you can go in and actually pull that kid in because their information is in the manager now. If you don't import a roster file, you would have to manually add that kid or you'd have to go back into Team Manager create the roster file and bring it across, which you could do. But like I said, just make this part of your normal process each week. Import the entry file, import the roster file, and you're good to go for the week, okay? Any questions so far? Terrific. So, we've imported the entries. We've seen what the teams are, we've seen what the athletes are, and we've imported the rosters. So the big step now is in Meet Manager, say you found out, you know, that day that Billy's name was spelled incorrectly. It's I-E instead of, you know, Y. If you had to change any of the athlete info, if you go to Athletes, it's going to bring up a screen that looks like this, and you just double click on any of the swimmers that you need to adjust any of the information for. It'll give you the option up here to make the appropriate correction. They give you a question about is the ID correct? That's fine. Just say yes. All right. But that athlete menu, that's where you can go in and view athletes, see what, what they're swimming, and so forth. All right. It's also where you can make the edits and corrections to their, their name and their information. So let's get a run. And say, you know, let's go down to event 15. And say, you know, oops, we forgot to enter anybody in this event. So let's go to adjust. And to add a swimmer, 
in an event. Just again, drag and drop. Click on the name, move the mouse, little fish appears. You can drag them into that particular lane. You can double click and it'll put them in just the first available spot. And then you can move them around from there. So I'm just going to drop some swimmers in here. Say so you needed to add, add a heat. Well, right here it says add heat. Click on add heat. We can add another heat. So say we also found out that, you know, the day of that meet that, you know, Wheezy Chandler was not going to be able to be at the meet. So we double click on her. Do you want to scratch her? Yes. We can pull her out. If you want to add somebody in there and do it quickly instead of having to scroll through all this, if you don't see the names down here for some reason, below where all the heats are, If you click on hide athletes, the athletes disappear. If you click on show eligible athletes, they show up. But if you don't want to hunt through a bunch of names, if you double click on any open lane, you can type in the first few letters of somebody's name. And it'll give you the option to just select that person. Click OK, and it drops that person in there. If you want to move swimmers around, say Samantha and Virginia got crossed up and swam in the wrong lanes, just drag and drop, and it flips them. Pretty straightforward and simple. So that's how you'd make any adjustments to what's already in the system. Okay. So once you're done making changes, this is one of the few places where high tech requires you to save something. So you would click save and it would remove that screen. If you accidentally try and close the screen out without saving, it's going to give you an error message to say, hey, you made changes. Do you want to save it? Yes. And notice it's now there. Now, notice the status over here went to blue and seed it. Now, I know I told you don't seed it. Seeding, all that means is putting swimmers in lanes. So if you move stuff around, you're technically seeding the, seeding the event. So don't panic if it says seed it. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't use the overall seeding feature to move swimmers around because, again, it's going to assign them their lanes specifically based on their times. So you definitely don't want to do it after you set all that stuff up in Team Manager and gotten the stuff across after manually putting it in because if you go in and seed it after the fact, it's going to take all that stuff, work you've done, and throw it out the window. So that's, again, making adjustments and changes. Again, that was on the Run menu. Adjust right here, F8, third button over right in the middle of the screen. That's for an individual event. So for a relay, let's go up here to event two, and we would click on adjust, and we can just again drag and drop. Got to see relay now. Save it. So if you want to change the people that are on the relay, you got two options to do it. You can either do relay names here. Or I like this option up here a little bit better because it lets you see all the relays. It's a little bit easier to work with. But so click on relays, third from the left, uh, third from the left, and you can go through and select a particular event. And just again, kind of like it was in Team Manager, you need to double click, and the first and the name will move over, or you can drag and drop. And you can move them around. So the order is different. That's what we're going to do. Any questions so far? So terrific. So that's adjusting the relay names, making those changes. Close that. We're back at the run menu. So, entering the other team's entries, we're not doing that this year. Not in the normal way that we would do it. That's going to be done after we're done swimming. And again, I'll walk you through that a little bit later. So you can kind of ignore. 
Roman numeral 12, but that's the old way of doing stuff. Checking the entries to make sure they're legal. So if you're concerned about making sure you didn't over your kids, if you want to do that, if you go into reports, either from the run menu or the main menu of Meet Manager, you can access this. Skip all the way down here to Exceptions Report, fifth from the bottom. Comes up on the screen that looks like this. Let's select this session by checking that box. Max entries, exceeded maximum number of entries per athlete. So we would put in five for max entries, including relays. Max individual entries is three. Max relay entries is two. You would sort it by athlete and click create report. And if anybody's entered too many events, it'll bring up a report that says that. But in this case, we didn't break any rules, so it says no data is there. That's a good sign. Click OK. So you've imported the entries. So you want to start, and, and you know you've made the adjustments you needed to make with regards to changes. So you want to start printing out paperwork for me. So you're going to print several different reports. First, most teams want to see a heat sheet. It's called a meet program in high tech. So we'll walk you through how to do that. So either from the run menu or from the main menu of meet manager, if you go to reports and select meet program, middle of the screen, you'll see all these filtering options up top. So these become a lot more important. So you're probably not gonna be running one just main heat sheet for a meet. You know, and normally you just put all 86 events on there and you'd be good to go. But in this case, these things are gonna be broken up different ways. So you can go through and say, you know, I want just the guys. I want an age range of zero to, so we're gonna do all the 10 and unders in this case. 0 to 10, rounds is all. We do want the individual events and the relay events. And it just brings up the option for those events. Okay. You could leave, you know, you could leave these blank. Again, team, well, you want your team, obviously. But say you just wanted to print out a heat sheet with, you know, event two, event 13, event 15, and you can scroll down over here, you got this little scroll bar on the side. You can select whatever events you wanted to run that day. And it could be a mixed bag, but this gives you the option of just selecting a limited number of events. Columns and format, down here we want triple. Format, just leave those blank. Including meet program, the selection here. This allows you to put in things, include things like team records, line for results. You can do a heat start to heat start times for a timeline for this. Figure out roughly how long it's going to take to swim. It just takes the times of the swimmers and runs a simulation on how long it's supposed to take and tells you roughly when each heat's supposed to start. Okay. You can look at these options on your own and figure out what you want. Once you've done that. If you click create report, it'll run a meet program. It'll run a heat sheet. Looks like this. Okay. This is something again, you know, this is what most coaches are going to operate off of. It's what the official's going to work off of. It's what the place judges are going to use to record their order of finish. Okay. Note again, you've got the option up here like any report in high tech, all the way on the left. You've got that little convert option to again convert it into a different format and you can email this out. So for example, you got a meet program, you can email that, email it to the parents. So they've got it in, in advance, they know what their kids are doing. Okay. Click OK. Close this. That's a meet program. If you wanted to print everything, you could just go up here and say select all. It selects all the events, it could run one master heat sheet for, the, for everything. Okay. Close that.
challenge this. So that's a heat sheet, a meat program. Score sheets from the judges recorder. So the old UK judges placing form that the place judges used to use and the judges recorder used to use to record an order of finish. We don't need those this year. They don't get run. The one thing you will do though is you will run a lane timer report. Worksheets for the timers. Those are going to be really important. So in Meet Manager, you can go to reports, lane timer sheets, and select the events that you want to run for that particular session. Format is continuous. Heats, all heats. You can include the entry time if you want. That'll pop up on there so the timer will know what the kid's best time is. Double space, no. Save some paper. Uncheck that box. You're not using touch pads. Relay athlete names, you can include that, all four. Sort by lane and event, and we want all the lanes. Once we're done selecting all the stuff we want, click Create Report, and it comes up with a report that looks like this. So this is what the timers are going to use to record the times when the kids get done swimming. This is really important because this is what is going to be essentially collected and delivered to the high-tech operator. So normally you would have gotten a score sheet after every event, you know, with a little UK judges form for each event. We're going to do things a little bit differently. You're just going to get the lane timer sheet at the end of the session. And then you can use that info to input that stuff into Meet Manager. And we'll walk through inputting the times and everything else and how that's gonna work. But these are gold. This is the most important piece of paper with regards to how these things are gonna operate. Okay, these are critical. Because the times are gonna determine where everybody finishes, where they place, and everything else. So don't lose them. <laughs> Real important for these not to get lost, destroyed, hurt, or whatever else. Close this. The other report that most teams are going to want to run is called an entry list. So this lists off all the events the kids are in and can include, like I said, if you make changes after you've dumped this stuff out of team manager, this allows you to run a report that they can work with. So if I go to reports and entry lists, about a third of the way down. Okay. Notice you've got your filtering options up here. So if you just want to run one report for the seven and eight year olds, age range seven to eight, if you want to just do girls, do female, select your team. Note there's alphabetical and age. Age is actually the chronological age of those kids. So it's not really useful for, for your purposes. It's literally the kid that was born in January is going to be listed, you know, ahead of the kid that was, you know, born in February. Okay, that's what age means as far as this report would go. So I would use again, if you want to break it down by age, use the age range filter to do that. Report type, options, and format. We want this by team. Options. We want athletes and relays. You want the relays in there, obviously. Event description and time. And the split sheet options you can leave that as is. Next tab over here, this one's important. Include in report, include heat and lane. You want that heat and lane data. It's really important. Okay. So click create report and it comes up with a report that looks like this. So it lists off the swimmer's name, the events are in. 1 3 is heat 1 lane 3. 1 2 is heat 1 lane 2. Okay. Even on the relays, it's going to list off, real neat, it tells you what order they're swimming in on the relay. It's a little two in parentheses, means that they're going second. All right. This is a great report to send to parents in advance of the meet. This is what you could give the parents and say, hey, instead of us having to get Sharpie all over our hands, you could write up your kids and then heat and lane on their arm on your end. You can do this in advance, and it'll save you a lot of work and effort. And more importantly, it's crucial if you want to maintain social distancing 
guess what? This is the best way to do it. Okay? So again, up here, top left, use this option to convert this file into a PDF or a Word file, whatever you want to you know, send to Teams. Most teams will go PDF with this. But convert it. That way you can send it to the other, you know, to the parents and whoever else. Also, this is important because this will be one of the files you're going to create to swap with the other team. This will be part of your new lineup exchange. So this is crucial to be able to know how to create this report and generate it in order to be able to, again, effectively exchange lineups with the other team. Questions so far? Close this. So that's most of the paperwork you're going to have to run for the me. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Works out pretty nicely. Again, you've got the option noting here. You got the, the ability to just select particular events. Because again, teams are going to run these things broken up in different ways, different orders, however they're going to do it. Talked about entry lists. So, once you've done all this, back to Meetup. So let's go back into Meet Manager. So I, I keep talking about backup and restore. Just again, as a, as a protection to save a database exactly where it is in the event something really goes bad, file, backup. Gives you the option to save this database as is. So in case something went wrong, got a uh, get out of jail free card. Okay? Tell a great story. So state high school meet a couple of years ago. We actually had a power outage at the swim meet. The meet was about three events in and we had actually just done a meet database backup. When the power flashed, it erased the high tech database for the state high school swim meet in the middle of the meet. And I was like, hey we got a backup I think person looked at me and said, right here. We were able to you know, get right back to work without any muss or fuss, no trouble. If we had not backed this thing up, we would have been in some deep, deep yogurt. So again, back up periodically. Anytime you do anything big in the database, import entries, back the meet up. Make a bunch of changes in there, back the database up. Okay. Click OK. It creates that file. And again, you'll just create you have multiples, but again, it's, it's an insurance policy. If you have to load that database, it's file and restore. Replace currently open database, and you just walk through the steps. Go find that file, and it'll load that file for you. Questions so far? Terrific. So, at this point, you're ready to kind of, quote unquote, work at the meet. So, Working at the meet is going to be a much different experience than it is in the past. Normally you would have sat at a computer either on the deck right by where everything's going on or maybe in a clubhouse. You'd be sitting with the other team and you'd be sharing the duties. The way this is going to work is going to be a little bit different. More than likely they're going to swim. They're going to collect the times and then maybe that evening or that afternoon or maybe after two or three days of this, you're going to get the lane timer sheets from the coach, the team rep, or whoever else, and then you'll go through the steps of inputting the information into the computer. You have a lot of flexibility with when you do this. The one bit of advice I, I'm gonna give teams is, I would suggest trying to keep up with this on a daily basis. The main reason being is, you're gonna get this information, and it's not gonna be like if something doesn't look right, or at times you know, it's hard to read, or something like that. It's going to be a situation where everybody's going to be gone. You might be sitting in your you know, living room on your couch putting this stuff in. And if you run into a problem and it's three days after it happened, the ability to track this info down might get a little bit more challenging. So to me, it becomes a little bit more important to probably, you know, on a daily basis, input the stuff as it, as it makes its way to you. Um, so if something does pop up, it's a little bit more top of mind with people. The coach go, oh yeah, I remember that. This kid swam in the wrong heat lane, and 
you know, I, I think, you know, I know that the time was wrong here or this, you know, something along those lines, they can clear that up. Now, hopefully, again, as this stuff gets, again, not every slow meet goes according to plan. Kids get in the wrong lanes, the wrong heats, the timers don't always do their jobs. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen that just like any other meet, you'll have to, you know, suss some stuff out and figure it out. But ultimately, again, hopefully they're taking good notes on these lane timer sheets. So if the wrong kid gets in the lane, you get a notation. Hey, this was actually Billy Smith instead of, you know, Joe Stevens. Okay. And he swam in the wrong heat lane, but, you know, input this time. And that way, again, you know how to move swimmers around as you need to do it. So you just make the adjustments on your end and you can input that data into the computer correctly because that becomes really important in how the stuff gets scored out, how kids do ribbons and things like that. Another thing, just broad overview on the ribbons. So the question comes up, are we going to do the ribbons before or after we merge results with the other team? You're going to do it before you merge results. Okay, you're going to do your ribbons based on what swims at your pool. So it's going to be first, to, you know, fifth place, sixth place, whatever, how many how many lanes your pool is based on, again, what's going on at your pool. You don't have to wait till the end of the week when all this stuff is merged together to do your ribbons. You can do that literally. As you input the information, you know, when you get done with that block of info, you could go ahead and just do all the ribbon labels for that event, get them over to your ribbon person, and they can kind of work through this stuff on a regular basis. Okay? So, again, you will not be waiting for the meet to be merged together with the other team in order to do ribbons. That stuff can be done as we go through. So working at the meet, all this stuff takes place in the run menu in Meet Manager. So let's go back into Meet Manager. And what I want to do is I want to load another database to kind of give you the sample data that we're working with. So let's go to, um, if we go to File, and select Save As, we're going to open up another database. So let's go to, let's type in Work Test as a file name and click Open. And that should have you back at the main menu. And now I want to load this sample database that I've given you. So if I go to File and select Restore, and we're going to replace the currently open database. Click OK. And we can close the Meet Mobile screen. And let's go find a sample file called SWMMBKUP 2020 ASA Work Test 02. And double click on it. Okay. Are you sure you want to overwrite this? Yes. Click OK. And you're back at the main screen. So, to work at the meet, everybody click on Run. And I've already got some sample data in here, so you'll see some events that are scored, some that are seeded. So, everybody skip down to event 17. Let's go to event 18, actually. So if you notice, I've got six swimmers here. And again, the events are listed here. The one and the two, well, that's the heat lane. The heat, I'm sorry, the heat number, heat one, heat two. So you're gonna take your lane timer sheets that you're gonna get, and those will look like, just as a reminder, I think I got some samples. Lane timer sheet looks like this. So the information is going to be input here, where it says official time. You'll see some numbers in here. They'll, they'll have that stuff in there. All right. So you'll take that data, and you'll just literally go in where it says finals time, and type in the time. So no punctuation is needed. So let's just put in some sample info. So that's everything for heat one. If the swimmer's disqualified, well, we're going to check the VQ box. And the VQ code, again, 
You should also get, along with your info, you're going to get two heat sheets. One of them's going to be the one from the star referee. One of them's going to be from the place judges. Now, again, we talked about the times taking precedence this year to determine the order of finish. We're still going to have a place judge there just in case the timers completely jam things up and don't get a time for a swimmer. We'll talk about how we'll manage that in a few minutes. But ultimately, if, a, you know, if that happens, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to check the exhibition box for that swimmer if we don't get a time. And I'll talk about that process a little bit later. But for now, let's just say, okay, hey, we DQ the swimmer. DQ code, this little box right here, you click on that, it pulls down a whole laundry list of stuff that a kid could have done. So set it false started. We'll put that in. Heat two, let's click on the next heat. And again, every swimmer needs a result though. So say somebody doesn't show up, well, we would put in NS for no swim. Okay. So notice once we're done, the status is listed as done right here. It means every swimmer has a result. If it's still blue, is seated, or white is unseated, it means that you fail to put in a time or a result for a particular lane or lanes for swimmers. It's got to get to done so you can move to the next step. Okay. When you're done, you really don't have to score the event. You can if you want to. It's not going to do any harm, um, but ultimately, I'd just leave it as is. You can still do the ribbon levels after this is done if you need to. So before you get off that, let's assume for a second that uh, we have kids who don't show up and we decide to combine races. Do we need to go into meet manager and change the heat and lane that they swam in, or how would we work through combine events or we pull kids from one heat to the so next? So to combine events, you're going to leave everything as is here in Meet Manager. Okay. Now, you might move swimmers around to be able to have them fit into the particular lanes. That's fine. And some of that stuff can be done in advance. So when you're when you're putting the meet together and you've imported this stuff in, you could go into Meet Manager and say, for example, in event, you know, scroll down to event 23. So say we've got the swimmer here in lanes, you know, one and three, and look at event 24 we got a kid in one and three so say we wanted to swim those two together so we would probably leave the girls where they are in lanes one and three and we move the boys so to do that we would manually go in under adjust and drag the boys down to say lanes four and five so they would swim there you know, they would swim together, but it's not going to be combined per se in Meet Manager. But you would know, and again, the timers would know at that point. So you could just, again, make the adjustment there to, to, to allow them to swim together, but still have the information as you need it. So does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So just, to, just to build on that for a half second. So if you have somebody swimming the wrong heat or wrong lane, the, the watch out would be if you see anything handwritten on the sheet, right. open up, find the name, and punch in the time. Exactly. So, again, one of two things will happen. If the kid gets in the wrong heater lane and they swim in that lane, again, you've got two choices. You could either go in and manually move them here in the run menu using that adjust feature to the correct heater lane, or you could just go, okay, I know that the kid actually, you know, I know he swam in heat four instead of heat three. You would have the time there. You just need to make sure that that time goes with that swimmer. So you can either adjust it in, in Meet Manager, move the kid around, and then put the time in, or you can go, okay, I know who this kid is. This is his time. I just got it from here instead of there. Okay. So going back up to the event where we put the times in, where we were done. When you're done, if you want to see the result, you can either click on List, or bring it up. A report that looks like this lists off the times for the swimmers. You can double check your math. Or you could click on score. It'll do the same thing, but just assign points. And again, if you score it, don't worry about it. When you merge the meet together, it'll still make the adjustments as needed. It's not going to foul that up. The big thing here is just again, be methodical, be careful when you're inputting this data. 
So that's, you can input it by heat. If you want to get really fancy, there's a box up here that says enter results by lane. So these lane timer sheets, the way that they're going to come to you, it's going to be everything from, you know, lane one. So lane one, event, you know, event one to whatever is going to be listed off. So if you don't want to have these things spread out all over the place and have to go, you know, okay, where's where's lane one, where's lane two, where's lane three, and have to you know jump from one to the other, you could click on this box for enter results by lane, and notice the options here: one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well, guess what? This is lane one, and this is heat one. So if there were multiple heats, so actually, let me get to an event. on event 13. So there's just one person in that lane. Click on lane 2, lane 3. Notice heat right here all the way on the left there's a column for heat and lane. So heat 1, lane 3. So you could again just take these lane timer sheets and do everything for heat 1 Heat 1, Heat 2, Heat 3, Heat 4, Heat 5, then jump to Event 2. So this might be a little bit more efficient way to work in this environment. You normally wouldn't do this at a regular meet because the data is going to the data would have normally come on those UK judges placing forms, which are broken down event by event. In this case, you're going to be working off these lane timer sheets instead. So this might be an easier environment to work in, a little bit more efficient way of doing things. Your choice, but like I said, that's how we how it works. But that's, again, just go through input times, input the VQs, put in the exhibition designation. So again, like I said, the only reason you're going to check the exhibition box is if you have a situation where there is no time for the swimmer, but the swimmer swam. They know that the swimmer swam. And they've got a place, and the place judge has something. So again, you've got to look at three sources of data. One, look at the lane timer sheets to get the times. Two, look at the place judge's sheets. You're not worried if they conflict with the timers, but you are worried if you've got a place for a swimmer and no times. Okay, and the timers, again, need to be instructed. If they don't get a time for, for a race, don't put no swim, put did not get time. So that way you know to go look at the place judges to be able to, again, you could make up a time if you wanted to, to, to guesstimate to make it fit. But for the purpose of scoring, that person needs to be designated as exhibition. That's the only time you're gonna check that box. So you know that, hey, we need to get a time for the kid to get him a ribbon, but let's, again, we wanna make sure that person doesn't score because we don't know what the accurate time is. Because that guesstimate could be, you know, the difference between the kid's scoring points and not scoring points. So in the interest of being fair and kind of within the scope of the rules, again, that's the only time you would check the exhibition box. And again, you're only gonna do that after you've done the ribbons, okay? Because if the box is checked, the kid doesn't get a ribbon, all right? Questions? Terrific, y'all are doing great. So again, working at the meet, we're inputting the times, inputting the results, and it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's, like I said, no punctuation is needed to input. Works out terrific. I don't think any teams are going to be using electronic timing equipment, but if you do, if you're using like the dolphin watches or things like that, you do have the option to go through. So let's go back to that run menu. If you are connected to timing equipment, there's an easy button for that. There's a thing that essentially just says, if you click on get times, if you're connected to the timing equipment, it's going to go out, communicate with the timing system, and allow you to pull those times in, okay? So again, that's gonna be a little bit different this year it, because again, if you're not on site for the virtual portion of this and they were using this, there's a way to actually load those files onto your computer and access them. And again, if you end up needing, it, need, needing help to do that, just call me or email me and I'll walk you through the steps. Because again, it'll, it'll make your job a little bit easier. Uh, Notice here, scores came up here, works out nice. Everybody go under that run menu, go to preferences, and go to results for list and score. 
If you want to customize the information that comes up on that report when you click list or score, this is where you would do it. And the big one here is under team scores, if you're not seeing the scores appear on these reports, if you make sure that box is checked and you want combined team score, it'll make sure the team scores every time you run that report, click score or list, well score, um, it'll actually list the points up to that point. Do the math on it. Other big thing is DQ codes, you want to make sure that's included. So when that report comes up, if the kid got DQ'd, you got the reason right there. Records, things of that nature. Close that. If for some reason you're not seeing the team scores on this part of the screen, under preferences again, run screen, I'm sorry, results. Uh, let's try this again. Team scores on run screen. There we go. Show combined. It's really all you're concerned about with one of our meets. And it'll bring up those scores on that screen. Um, let's look back at the notes. So again, end of the times. If the kid's DQ, check the DQ box and check the reason for it. If there's not a reason provided, it's you know just check the DQ box. Hopefully the coach, you know, the star referee will provide that info. Um, again. Keep an eye on the notes of the lane timers, because um, again, kid might get in the wrong heat or wrong lane. If you got to move it around again, you can either take that time from that information, find them in the in the run menu in that you know in a different heat or a lane, and put the time in, or you can actually move the swimmer and, and do that as you want it to. You don't have to print copies of results after every event like you would in a regular bill meet. Um, don't worry about that. You can just print out a summary of the results when the thing's done. Uh, if for some reason, let's go back in. If for some reason you, you know, you're working through this and you found out, you know what, I think I screwed up event 15. You would go in and put the corrected info in. And then up here at the very top, click on rescore. And it's going to just, again, rescore every event, just make sure that it's done correctly. Whoops, it didn't like that. Wow, that wasn't very nice. But it'll, it'll run through and work out just fine. Uh, what else? Labels. So ribbon labels. So when you want to go and do labels for the event, if you click on... In the run menu, you go to labels and award labels. See it up here? You just select the events you want to print labels for. Laser, label selection, laser, 3 by 10. Age group, individual places 1 to 0. Relay places 1 to 0. Award type. You want to do award type by heat. Do not do standard award label. That will go from first place to place 100. You only get places, you'll get ribbons for however many, you know, lanes your pool has. So if you've got a five lane pool, you're getting, fit, you know, all the way through fifth place ribbons. Do it by heat. So if you're missing ribbons for, for kids, it's probably because you had standard award label checked. Okay, make sure you do it by heat. That'll go heat one, places one to five, heat two, places one to five. It'll get that stuff correct. So create labels, it spins away and comes up with a report that looks like this. Print the labels, you can go. Like I said, you don't need to merge the meet with the other team to do your labels. meets done again file backup okay when you complete file backup that's crucial all right so exchanging results for the other team this is the new stuff sorry to make y'all wait 
So the exchange of info with the other team is going to be a lot different than what we're used to. Normally you would have sent team manager files in advance to me, home team would have pulled everything in and put everything together for the meet in the meet manager and then sent a backup to the other team and then you would have operated the meet and gone from there. In this case, each team is going to run their meet during the week, they're going to input their results as the week goes on, and then they're going to send essentially three high-tech files and two PDF files to the other team. And then each team can go through the steps of importing the other team's results and entries and then combining that information into a consolidated set of scored results, okay? There's, again, it'll seem very daunting, but it's not as brutal as, it's, as it sounds. It's a pretty, you know, it's about a seven step process to actually combine all this stuff and get it set up to where it needs to be. So first and foremost, to create the files that you need for the other team, when you're done, Go back out to the main menu and go to file and the first file you're going to create is going to be your entries with the heats and lanes included so file export entries for meet manager merge and same meet fourth item down and you'll select your team don't have to worry about the LSC or the region. Gender, we want both. Events, all three boxes can be checked. Relays, we want relays plus athletes. The big one here is, and it defaults to be unchecked, you want to make sure the box that says include heat and lane is checked. That makes sure that the heat and lane assignments for those swimmers are checked. Okay. This is important because this is going to take your entries for your team and provide them to the other team because those entries have to be in place first as a destination for the results to eventually come in. Okay, so we gotta make sure we get the entry file out first and then we'll have a destination for the results to go in. Click OK and it's gonna say one team, X number of swimmers, X number of entries, relays and so forth. Click OK. Where are you going to send it? So make sure you're sending it somewhere where you know where that file is going. Click OK. And it's going to say zip file successful. And the name of the file is going to be meet entries slash the name of the meet and the date of the meet dot 001, 002, whatever dot zip. Okay. Meet entries, meet name, meet date dot zip. Click OK. So that's the entry file. The other file will be the results. Okay. So again, file, export, and notice there are two options for results in here. The first one is it's listed as results for swim manager swims. That's essentially a team manager file. Okay. And that's not what we want to use to exchange with the other team. You'll use that for your own use to get your stuff back into Team Manager, Swimtopia, Team Unify, whatever you're using to manage your statistics, but you do not want to use this for line of exchange with the other team. We want to go all the way down to the sixth item, results for Meet Manager Merge of Same Meet. Okay? Make sure you get this one right because otherwise the other team is going to be calling you up going, hey, where's your stuff? Click on that. We want to select all the events, so select all. Round should be completed. And we'll click export. And it's going to go, okay, one team, X number of swimmers, X number of entries, relays, relay names, and so forth. Okay, click OK. Again, know where you're sending it. Don't just send it to the, you know, the default folder that you have no clue where that folder is. And you save it 10 times and go, where is it? I can't find it. Click OK. Again, the name of the file is going to be Merge Meet Results. That's your first indicator. 
if it's the, the team manager version, it's going to say just meet results dash whatever. This needs to be named merge meet results. It'll automatically be named this if you make the right selection to start with. Click OK. And that's the second file that you need to bring out of meet manager to save uh, to give to the other team. Just in case, you go to file and select backup. Send the other team a backup to your database. Okay? So, a couple of reasons for this. The, the bottom line one is if you if you screw up and send them the wrong files, if they've got a backup, they can load your database on their end and create the files they need as needed. A backup allows this to be done, you know, a little bit easier, just as an insurance policy. Click OK and just follow the prompts. So those are the three high tech files. Meet manager high tech files that have to be sent to the other team. Okay. The other thing is you're going to want to create two PDF reports. Okay. So those two PDF reports are going to be, one, the entry list, and two, the actual meet results themselves. Okay, so again, just a re refresher on the entry list, reports, entry lists, report type options, again, team, one athletes plus relays. The other tab is include report, again, make sure include heat and lane is checked. Create report, and this is just a paper trail of what your entries were for the meet. Okay. Again, convert that file to a PDF. This little icon next to the printer walks you through those steps. The last file that has to be created is again reports, results, and again, just select all. You've got your options down here for what you want to include. Triple is fine. And you can include records, whatever else you want to include, your choice, personal preference. You don't need to really worry about including the team scores because you're going to rescore the meet anyway. Click create report. Comes up with a report that looks like this. And there's your info. Okay. So again, make the PDF. That again, it's just a paper trail. So if there's any question, you know, you you start going through stuff and something doesn't look right, and you're like, well, wait a minute, the PDF is this, and the results I'm seeing are this, it might mean that they just sent you the wrong file. Okay, so just again, it's a paper trail, lets you do your job. So those are the five pieces of info that you've got to email the other team once y'all are done completing the competition. So again, the deadline for each week is going to be Sunday at 3 p.m. Teams can agree to move that deadline up if they want to. So they want to get everything knocked out and done by Friday. Hey, Friday at 4, send, send your stuff to me. Okay. When you're exchanging stuff with the other team, really important is just like a regular lineup exchange. Don't set some arbitrary deadline and say, I'll send my stuff by then, you send your stuff by then. Because here's the potential hiccup that can happen. Say you agree to exchange by 4 o'clock on Friday and you email the other team your, all of your results, your entries and everything else and you've sent it and you're looking in your inbox and at 4.05 there's still nothing there. 4.15, nothing there. 4.30, nothing there. You call up the other team, can't get them on the phone. 6 o'clock rolls around. Finally get somebody on the phone, well I think I sent it, uh, oops. Well. The suspicion creeps in that the other team has had access to your all of your stuff, including results, and is going, okay, I think we're going to make this time just a little faster. We're going to move this kid into this event, and just again, it opens up some suspicion that you really don't want to have to deal with. And again, there's usually a good reason why somebody missed a deadline, but it just immediately gets you off on the wrong foot and creates a potential conflict situation that's totally avoidable. If you just say, hey, look, let's get on the phone at 4 o'clock, and then we'll start sending emails. If you do that, things will work out fine. If you can't get them on the phone, then wait until you get somebody, you know, another human being on the end of the phone that says, okay, I'm getting ready to send the stuff. Okay, great. Got it. Got it. We're good. Then that way everything's above board. There's no opportunity for any issues. Okay? Make sure you just follow those guidelines. 
otherwise, like I said, it becomes a very big trust experiment. So, you've got their stuff. They've got your stuff. How do you put all this stuff together in Meet Manager? This again, brand new territory, okay? This is the magic seven step process I was referring to. So, the first thing you've got to do, let's go back into Meet Manager. You got to create another set of events as a destination for the other team's entries and results. So in order to do that, we're going to go in, let's go to events. So again, your entries and results will already be done, complete and in there. So events 1 to 86 that you've got in your database, you want to move those to a different location and create a brand new set. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to renumber right here at the top middle. And it's going to say, okay, we want to increase the numbers. And let's just, an offset amount should be 100. Let's move everything down by 100. Okay? Starting at event number one and ending at event number 86. There are 86 events in our league. So click OK. And it's now taken, if you notice, the event numbers over here have changed from 1 to 101, 102, 103, 104. So we've created you know, a spot to put in 86 other events. So still staying in the events menu, we're going to go to copy. We want to create another 86 events for the other team stuff to come into. So copy events from 101, that's the starting event number, to 186, and copy the events to event number one. Don't worry about these check boxes, don't allow swim offs. That, that again, won't apply, just leave that stuff as is. But the big thing is copy events from 101 to 186, copy them to event one. 86 events added. So click OK. Whoops. Click close. And we're in business. So if you kind of scroll up here, you'll now see event 1 to 86. All right. So, first thing, renumber the events. Second step, copy the events. So we'll close this. So we're now ready to start importing things. We're going to import the other team's entries and results. So the first thing to bring in under File, Import, we're going to merge entries. We're not going to just import entries. We're going to merge entries. Third selection down. MM to MM. Meet manager to meet manager. And let's go find, there's a file in your samples that should say meet entries, Deerfield SL, Seventeenth of June. Double click on that. It's going to say it's unzipped. Double click on H file. Oh, cancel that. I grabbed the wrong file. My, my mistake, guys. I'm sorry. So again, file, import, merge entries. Entries, Deerfield SL, 17 June, double click on it. Click OK. Double click on that. Click OK. Copy the competitor numbers, yes. And it's going to bring in 64 entries and so forth. Go to run. should see some entries in there. Go to File. The last thing you're going to bring in are the results. Okay? So File, Import, Merge Results, MM to MM. And 
again, it's going to find a sample file in your stuff. It'll say merge meet results. Deerfield SL, 17th of June, 2014. One team, 59 entries, 59 athletes, 22 entries, so forth. So we've got to run in events 1 to 86. We're going to see some results. Okay. So we have 1 to 86. Now we go all the way down. you got events, you know. 101 and so forth. So how do we combine these results into one set of scored results? So in the run menu, we're going to go to combine. So click on combine, source event number. So we're going to, we want to combine event one and event 101. So that's event one is the other team stuff. Event 101 is our team stuff for the same event. So it's one and a hundred and whatever, you know. So event one, target event number, 101. Method, copy results and delete results from source event. Don't worry about deleting the other team, you know, one of the events and results. It's gonna combine, it's gonna combine these two and drop them into the destination events. In this case, we want event 101. You can Source event number can be event 101 and target event number can be event one. It doesn't make a difference one way or the other. But just again, the important thing is that the two events are matches. So event one and event 101. Event two, event 102. Event 125 and event 25, okay? Click okay. And it's gonna say, do you wanna combine this? This procedure's not reversible, yes. And it spins away and comes up with one set of results. Okay, it's combined the two sets of results into one set for the two teams. Okay, pretty straightforward. Close that, and unfortunately, you got to do it 86 times. I know it's a little bit tedious, but again, it walks through this stuff nice and neat. And again, after going through this once, you know, for one meet, you, you'll see it's not as complicated as it sounds. It's actually pretty straightforward. So again, just kind of quick review. First step, go into events, renumber the events. Second step, copy the events from event 101 back to event one to create a destination for the other team's entries and results. Step three, import their merge entries file. Step four, import their merge results file. And then, you know, the next step in there is go in, go into the run menu, combine the results, and again, rinse and repeat. Go through 86 times and you're good to go. Question. Yes. Uh, you mentioned earlier if we're in a metric pool swimming against a yard pool to send you the results. Yes. Is that going to be at a specific time that we all have a three-way phone call, or do we just send results directly to you? Y'all can send them directly to me. Um, that way, like I said, just give me a heads up that week. Just say, hey guys, we're, we're going to send the stuff at this point. Um, I do know that it will not be an issue in week one. I know that because I'm actually going to be on the road that weekend. But the rest of summer, I'm you know, this is my life. What I'm doing, so I'll, I'll be available whenever y'all want to do it. And like I said, I'll try and get that stuff done. You know, within a matter of, it, it's a little bit more time consuming, but within a matter of you know an hour or two, when, when it's sent to me, I'll I've got to just essentially dump the stuff into a spreadsheet with the best of description of it. So we should still pick a target time. Yes. Two coaches pick a target time to be done, so at least right. the entries come to you relatively at the same time. Correct. Correct. Great question. 
So we would not send those results to the other team? No, there's no need to do that. Um, like I said, the, the steps are listed here with screen captures of everything. You know, the, the other issues that come up, you, you won't have some of the normal, you know, challenges you would have in a standard meet, but some of the just general common sense guidelines back up, back up the database consistently. Just, you know, every time you make a big change, back things up. Get comfortable with the idea of backup and restore. Backing up a database, restoring to load that database into you know, another computer or another location. Because again, that's how you're gonna exchange those databases. Um, please use the template me. It makes life so much easier. Um, I, again, I said this in um, the rules meeting the other night, that look, if you run into problems with this and just like, I can't get this, call me. You know, we'll walk through it, and then you can send me the files, and you know, we'll we'll go through it together. We'll go through step by step, and I'll get you up to speed on how to do it. And again, if you just, you know, you got a week where your computer person's away and nobody can do this, send it to me. Um, the question got asked: Do both teams need to do this? Technically, no. I mean, you you could say, hey, we'll do it this week. You know, we'll send you the stuff, and you can trust each other to do it. Um, I just think that again. It's a little bit time consuming, but the idea is hopefully when you, if you both do it, you'll come up with the same answer as far as the final score goes. And if you don't, then that's probably a reason to double check something, you know, something might be out of kilter. But otherwise, you know, like I said, you've got flexibility to kind of do this as y'all are comfortable. And like I said, if you've got, you know, one team feels very you know, confident in the fact that, hey, we trust what they're going to do, we'll leave it on them, that's fine. And like I said, if you run into a situation where your computer person's away and nobody can sort this out, just send the stuff to me. I'll take care of it. Um, it does not matter if it's a five-lane pool versus a six-lane pool. Um, that, that does not make a difference. That still works in this environment. It actually works out quite nicely. And the one thing I, I mentioned the other day is, ironically, this might be the golden ticket to how to deal with a, a rainout. This might be a great way for teams next year moving forward that if you can't find a way to handle, uh, get everybody back together to get things completed, maybe this is the way to get this stuff done. Um, you know, I, I I love the idea of, of a meet. It's a great social, ex, you know, experience. Um, and, and again, I'm, I'm going to miss the fact that that's not going to be part of part of this year. But you know, like I said, we learn something new every day. Um, pay real close attention to the files that are exchanged, just make sure you're emailing the right file because these things, you know, get renamed and renamed and renamed and renamed and sometimes, you know, you might send an earlier version that doesn't have all the data that you need. That you need. Uh, double check. Like I said, you're used to seeing everything for one race in one piece of paper with those UK judges placing forms. That's not going to be the case. So make sure you don't get off track when you're inputting times. So maybe that option to input times by lane instead of by heat might be a cleaner way to make sure you don't hiccup and you know miss get a you know wrong heat with a wrong you know event. Um, like I said, if you run into a situation where a swimmer you don't get a time that the place judge got a place to handle that, like I said, you can use the place judges to back up to determine that kid's placement, make sure they get a ribbon. But then after you've done the ribbon, check the exhibition box so that person doesn't score points because the time that they have is not accurate or valid. Uh, update your software. Uh, you go to High Tech's website. Uh, it's listed here. And just again, make sure that your software is current. Um, if the meets this out of a 10 or fewer points, y'all can choose to go back and double check stuff. But like I said, I think that in this environment, it's probably not gonna be something you're really gonna have to worry about. The steps for the week, and the you know, kind of game plan for the meat process, pre-meat conversation, all that stuff is listed here. Um, just again, broad overview, we start out in team manager, do the entries there, or some type of your team unify, whatever you're doing, manually assign the heats and lanes, then export that stuff to be imported into meat manager, import the full team roster and the entry files, go in, in meat 
manager, input your team's times, places, all that good stuff. You can do your ribbons at your convenience and leisure that week. And then you're ready to exchange. See, we export the merge entries file. We export the merge results file. We create PDFs of the entry list, the results, and we send it back up, those five pieces of info for lineup exchange with the other team. Then the, each team combines the results through the steps we've listed out. Um, like I said, you got all the flexibility in the world to run these meets as you see fit. email or phone or text I, I know I say don't text with the number of teams we got it's not as big of a deal that stuff's not going to get lost in the situation but communicate the score technically the home team can do it out of team can do it just make sure I get the score uh, once you're done and we'll try and get stuff out like we normally would with the newsletter and feedback let me know what works let me know what doesn't work this is kind of a new way of doing stuff and we hope it's efficient but like I said if you find a better way of doing this we want to know We'll share it with the other teams as quickly as we can to try and make everybody's job easier. Uh, I've got sample forms in here and other stuff. Just, again, don't get yourself into a hole with this stuff. If you run into problems, reach out for help. I'm here to help you any way that I can. Um, thank you, above all, and everything else for, for sticking it out. Um, we are so blessed with the dedication of the teams. Um, it would have been real easy for people to just say, you know what, we're just not going to do it. It's too much stuff to do. I, I think that the, the, the ones that are sticking it out, y'all are awesome. We, we can't thank you enough for your dedication and your, and your patience because I think that you're going to be offering up something that is sorely needed in what's going on in the world today. So we really, really appreciate everything you're doing. So with that, uh, open up to any questions. Yeah, we'll take a few minutes if anybody wants to type in a question. Uh, one to follow up on is we discussed uh, in our last meeting that there may be a week where we choose not to swim all of the events. Right. Should we end up changing the template to delete those events or just leave them blank? I just leave them blank. It's easier. It's just straightforward. It's a simple way to kind of stay with you know, what's already complicated. makes it less complicated. Just don't put anything in there. Oh, one thing I will cover real quick. I, I talked about records. Um, if you want to in include like team or pool records in your database, if I go back out to the main menu and go to events, 